Thank you very much. My presentation today is about HAL coding technologies, and especially in the codings. Actually, I'm a chemist by training, so this is an attempt to explain buzzy words like uh, silly acrylate, self policing, uh, depletion coatings, and all those things that might sound uh, um, strange to your ears, but uh, actually, this is an effort to explain and uh, give an insight and translate in, in tangible things to a checklist to select uh, your hard coding uh, technology. Let's say about hull coatings. Actually, the performance of the vessel is analogous to its shape, the surface characteristics, the micro and macro roughness. Apart from the shape of the hull, all other parameters can be saved uh, during the operation of the vessel. So this is what we have to uh, focus. Just keep in mind that a change in roughness of about 10 to 20 microns during the operation of a vessel might increase by one uh, percent the total hull resistance. The hull thread is metal, the, the hull is a metal surface, so it has two major uh, threads, the physical corrosion and the biological fouling. And especially when it comes for fouling, it takes only one minute by the immersion of a half surface, of a metal surface inside the sea, for the first organic molecules to attach on the surface and initiate the process of the foul. By 24 hours, bacteria, like conditioning of the hull surface, and in one week or two to three weeks, we have the microfouling or the hard fouling, barnacles, as we say. The fouling is a huge problem. It has an immense economical uh, effect on the operations per vessel. If there was no fouling system, and the fouling system, then 150 kilos of um, sea growth uh, would attach on the surface of the hull. The loss of speed from moderate fouling can go up to 15 or 18 percent, and it. Uh, um, a container ship with um, a medium container ship can save up to one million dollars per year just for protecting its heart. In essence, it's pay now, pay now, or pay later. So the existence of an unfouling system is essential for the good operation of the vessel. It's, all not, it's not only about economical things, it's also about emissions, and it's also about uh, invasive species, a biological problem that can um, invasive species that can be transferred all over the world. So, when a technical director is about to select an antifouling system, this is the major checklist point that he has to address: cost, capability, speed. What is the uh, idle uh, period of uh, of the vessel? Where is it the sailing area, the longevity, the roughness, regulatory affairs? So let's take um, some other uh, insight about uh, the fouling uh, problem, and especially the fouling patterns. You can see here that the risk, the high risk areas of fouling all over the world are almost identical, like the same pat patterns of the um, current uh, how about the sea? The sea has a rather stable salinity, ranging from 3.4 to 3.5 percent, up to a depth of 4,000 meters. There are some areas of extreme or low salinity, um, maybe the, um, the ice areas. The temperature uh, presents large variations on latitude from minus 2 in ice areas to uh, even plus 30 in um, uh, tropical uh, areas. And uh, the diurnal variations do not exceed 0.4%. These are uh, physical constants and data uh, all over the world. 
So, what is a paint? A paint is a mixture of four main components. The resin, or chemists call it the binder. This is what it takes um, all the ingredients together. It's pigments and fillers. It's the functional additives, those additives that help the weighting and the proper surfacing of, of the paint and even biocides for the antifouling systems and some solvents in order to make it fluid. One component that is very important is the solid content of the paint. The solid content, the content of the paint is everything that will stay on the surface after you have evaporation or curing of uh, the paint. The solid content is important because if um, all, all coatings are measured in terms of dry film thickness. So the more solid content there is in the paint, the more um, rich and uh, thicker the coating uh, will, will end. All antifouling, especially the self-polishing uh, antifouling system, <coughs> contain biocides. After the ban of tin compounds in the early uh, 2000, the major biocide component of antifouling paint is copper. And actually, cuprous oxide, it's copper one. Copper has uh, a broad range, a low cost, but it has to be overloaded inside the paint in order uh, to, to give good, um, good results. Actually, there are some organic antibacterial or antifouling uh, biocidal components and there is a new trend of very, very high specific uh, molecules that have, developed, have been developed especially from pharmaceutical uh, uh, companies in order to uh, provide uh, antifouling uh, properties in long tidal uh, conditions. Some tips. A good anti-fouling paint has more than 30 or 35 percent of copper inside. So for every 100 grams of the paint, 30 or 35 uh, grams is uh, copper inside. New anti-fouling biocides, they are performing very good, especially in idle uh, conditions. And whenever you meet a component called copper prefume, it's a very good booster. It helps copper uh, perform better. So whenever you see copper prefume inside, it's a very good thing. Now, what about the mechanism? You have heard about the self-policing and uh, the um, controlled depletion coatings and things like that. Antifouling coatings, especially the soil polishing, lose some of the, their thickness due, uh, during the voyage of a vessel. And in this way, they release the biocides, they lose their thickness, and release the biocides to prevent the adhesion of um, biological life growth. There are three different mechanisms. The first one is what we call the control depletion. They have a resin inside, a pine oil called rosin, that gets slightly released to the environment in order to um, release uh, the biocide. Some more modern um, technologies include the silicon acrylate and um, the copper or zinc acrylates. You see those organic molecules in, in uh, red, in uh, yellow lines? These are the backbones, the polymer, the resin, the binder, the one that holds all the pigments and the uh, solid content uh, together. Those have the, um, the property of hydrolyzing, meaning that they break down, they become soluble to water. So even the binder, the resin, gets dissolved in the water and in this way, the, uh, the antifouling coating is losing some of its, um, uh, its thickness uh, and goes away. The major difference between the seal and uh, the copper or zinc uh, acrylate seal are based on some silicon uh, molecules that they hydrolyze, they break down. 
Um, they present um, a low erosion uh, rate, but the important is that they perform poorly, especially against the diatoms. It's the slime. So many um, silly lacrylate uh, coatings carry slime along the bodies of the, um, of, the uh, of the vessel. On the other hand, copper or zinc acrylate, they are a bit better, but again the problem is that they need ions, they need salt in order to get dissolved. So they do not perform very well, especially uh, next to fresh water um, areas. Another technology that developed in the last decade is the fouling release coatings. Those are coatings that are very, very slick and they do not um, allow for a very strong uh, adhesion of the fouling of the biological growth to the surface. The adhesion exists, so to my opinion, fouling release coatings will never become anti-fouling coatings. But due to the friction and the movement of the vessel, due to the fact that the adhesion is poor, then the fouling, um, uh, the fouling um, eliminates and uh, goes away. There are some surface properties that can help fine-tuning um, this uh, fouling release uh, mechanism. Um, they are more resistant to, to cleaning, but they are very hard to apply and to remove. The game changer in anti-fouling coatings will be, in the next years, the roughness. And the roughness is not only because it will reduce the friction coefficient and reduce the fuel consumption, it's because roughness will present better anti-fouling performance. You can see there the, um, the two-bit um, pattern of water in a rough coating. It means that the water can become stagnant in center areas and these areas will become fouling, uh, will, will present fouling nuclei. It will, fouling will start from there. So the important thing is to drop below 40 or 50 microns in, um, in initial roughness in order to have even an anti -fouling, a better anti-fouling performance. Closing some tips in order to select a very good anti-fouling system. Binder, do not get confused what it comes from binder and these silly lacrylates, zinc acrylates, control depletion is completely different to the biocides. You can have an extreme technology uh, of a binder but very low content of copper, it will still give you a medium uh, performance. Both of them should be elevated at the same time. The ideal thing is that you have to use paint schemes that combine different binder technologies in order to be adaptable to the different conditions that the vessel faces during its voyage. Thickness. There is a constant pressure to reduce the thickness in order to save cost. The main opinion, my, my essential opinion, is that thicker coatings may be a bit more expensive during missile application, but they pay off in a five years um, period. Idle time, be very careful with the idle condition times of a vessel. If there is an extended idle time, go for a very good anti-fouling system. Surface preparation is very, very important, and here is a tip. If an underwater uh, cleaning takes place before dry docking, there will be a lot of cost saving during the dry docking operations due to minimal blasting requirements. And monitoring is very, very important in order to assess the hull performance and should be an integral part of modern vessels. Thank you very much for your attention.